Bethlehem's star. Did you know from the beginning of Genesis all the way through the Bible, it talks about this coming one, this Messiah. Let me just read a few of them to you. Genesis 49.10 The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet until Shiloh comes. Shiloh is a term meaning Messiah, the one expected, the one anointed. And a scepter is a symbol of a king. Genesis talks about it. Out of Judah will come this one. Numbers 24. I see him. This is a prophecy of Balaam. I see him, but not now. I behold him, but not near. He could see into the future, this vision God gave him. A star shall come out of Jacob. A scepter shall rise out of Israel. There's the scepter again, and there's our star. A star will come out of Judah. And the heavens declare the glory of God. And the firmament showeth forth his handiwork. Yes, the heavens told the story of God. All the constellations, stars, and planets in their rotation, in their seasons, speak of, of Messiah's birth, his death, his resurrection, and his coming in glory. The whole story, the whole biblical story is written in the heavens. But Babylon and Greece and others came along and polluted that story and made the zodiac out of mythical things, magical things. And the story was pretty much lost to mankind that's in the heavens. But it is in the heavens. Very, very, very interesting. And um, I'd like to read you now from Matthew 2. Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. Wow, there's that star. And moving on down. Then Herod, when he had secretly called the wise men, determined from them, what time the star appeared going on down and when they heard the king they departed they, they the wise men when they spoke with herod and found out he was trying to destroy the babe that was born he they departed and you know herod went on and had the bethlehem babies all murdered at that time trying to kill this king that was being born when they saw the star no. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. As the star hovered over these certain places for them. And when they had come into the house, they saw the young child and Mary his mother and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had worshipped him, they opened up their treasures. The wise men were led by this star. And, you know, uh, there's been many videos made about it. There's been much talk about it. And it's been understood that it possibly could be a constellation. I mean, not a constellation, a conjunction of planets. But can you open up your mind a little bit and think a little bit bigger? <laughs> I'd like you to. <laughs> it's, it's interesting. Um, it could not have been one of the constellations because uh, they tell the story, but the, the story was broken and they're, they're changing in the seasons and changing in the times. But it was the planets that they found that were interesting and that they thought the planets aligning is what, was what, the, what Magi would have followed. But the planets uh, rotate in, in an east to west pattern they, they retrograde in an east to west pattern. And the Bethlehem star did strange, un, 
unusual supernatural things. It went north to south. I'm going to read this little clip for you. The uh, ancient writings show that this was not a created star or planet. Planets move east-west in retrograde motion. His star moved north-south, sometimes visible, other times not, sometimes standing over, and sometimes coming close to the earth, and sometimes rising high in the sky. It appeared much brighter than the sun and was exceedingly frightening to behold. That's more than Jupiter and Saturn aligning or any of the planets, right? Yeah, it's special. A special star, a special place, a special time. And was what I'd like to say to you here is, from Genesis to Revelation, we find Jesus coming in many forms. He was the angel of the Lord. He was in the fire, the, the burning bush. He was the cloud by day and the fire by night. He was a war in the world and he was a great a mighty voice sounding on Mount Sinai and in, in uh, Pentecost, uh, a place of Pentecost. He, he's the glory in the temple of, of the Lord. He was the rock that gave forth water. And I would just like to say that for me, these scriptures teach me that he himself is the star. He led them. He took the wise men. He was the one that announced to them it was time to go. It was time to go find this baby. The stars, the heavens, they learned from scripture and they learned from the stars that the heavens declare the glory of God. And at the brightness of his rising, um, he is the light. Arise, shine, for your light has come. Uh, and, and the final one I have for you is in Revelation 21. It says here, the glory of God illuminated, that that's the new Jerusalem, and the Lamb is its light. He is the glory. He is the Shekinah glory. He is the glorious, glorious cloud by day and a, a glorious fire by night and on. And this Bethlehem star rose and followed and led them. He, the angel of the Lord led Israel out of the wilderness and he will lead them into safety in the, in the time to come. He's so much more than we know. He's so worthy to be known and to be loved. I pray that you will seek him and find him with all your heart. That you would find joy and that you would expand your understanding and thinking that this baby Jesus could become the king of all the universe. Thy light has shined and brought light to the Gentiles and brought light to the Jews. The glory of the Lord shines forth. And one day the whole earth, the whole cosmos will be lit up with his glory at his coming.